So for those who are longtime viewers of The Humanist Report, I have talked for years now on this program that we need electoral reform. It's not necessarily something that I overemphasize, but I always touch on it. Like, we need to make sure that we have more than just two parties because the two-party duopoly isn't working. It's just a bunch of ghouls who serve the same financial interests that are ruining the country, ruining the planet, and we need more options because two options isn't enough, especially considering they're not really, you know, that different. So AOC, a member of the squad, is someone who has been doing, I think, a phenomenal job at representing progressives in Congress. She's not perfect, but nobody is. But she said something that really speaks to one of my issues with the political system, that there aren't enough choices. And because of our two-party duopoly, we're essentially in the situation where conservatives get their own party and centrists and the left and socialists are forced to share a party, which it doesn't make for a great political alliance, given that, you know, we don't just have different goals, but our goals are diametrically opposed to the goals of centrists. We want Medicare for all. They're actively trying to stop Medicare for all. We want tuition-free public colleges and universities, and they don't even want to go that far. You know, we'd be lucky to find someone that supports the first two years of uh, community college being free, for example, in the Democratic Party, who's a centrist. So we butt heads a lot, and this is causing a lot of friction within the Democratic Party, and it's allowing Republicans to dominate. And it shouldn't be this way. So AOC expressed this, and I wanted to share what she had to say because she essentially summarized my take over the last, you know, several years. It's been my take forever, but for those of you who have been listening to the podcast, you know that I've been saying something similar to this. So as Quint Forgy of Politico writes, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said in an interview published Monday that Democrats nationwide can cultivate too big of a tent, asserting that she and her party's 2020 frontrunner, former Vice President Joe Biden, would be in different political parties in any other nation. Asked for a profile by New York Magazine about what role she might play as a member of Congress should Biden capture the White House, the freshman House Democrat from New York responded with a groan. Oh God, she said, in any other country, Joe Biden and I would not be in the same party, but in America, we are. A spokesperson for the Biden campaign did not immediately return a request for comment. Yeah, my thoughts exactly. Um, we should not be sharing a party with centrists. Because conservatives, you know, they get to share a party with people that they largely agree with. I mean, there are certainly differences uh, within the Republican Party. there I think the biggest difference is likely the neocons and libertarians. Um, but also you have, you know, fundamentalist evangelicals in that party, along with individuals who are more nationalistic and xenophobic. But at the end of the day, they all have intersecting goals, whereas that's not the case in the Democratic Party. We are pushing for changes, radical reforms that conflict with what the Democratic Party wants because they have donors that don't want to enact the changes that we want to enact because that threatens them existentially, healthcare being the number one example. Um, but when she says that, you know, we can cultivate a tent that's too big, yeah, Democrats boast about, you know, the Democratic Party being a big tent, and they don't realize that that's not actually a good thing. When you have a tent that's too big, that leads to ideological incoherency, right? It becomes difficult to assess what any particular individual believes in the Democratic Party. Because when you vote for a party, people use, and political science research indicates this, people use party labels as information shortcuts. So when you see Democrat, you know, you can assume a number of things about them. They are in favor of the women's reproductive rights. They're in favor of LGBTQ rights, for example. When you see a Republican, that means they're going to be more fiscally and socially conservative. Um, but I mean, it's getting to the point now where when you look at that Democrat label, you don't know what it means. You could be looking at someone who is a uh, centrist, maybe even center right, or someone who's a socialist. And that just doesn't make for a good political alliance, especially considering our ideologies are butting heads with one another, right? I mean, it's not even like the Democratic Party is comprised of reformers like Elizabeth Warren. That in and of itself would be an issue. But we need radical change and we can't get radical change so long as we are being 
dragged down by Democrats. And I've said this before, and there's really no way to facilitate this, but Democrats need to be the de facto right-wing party, and we need a new progressive party. Either that or we need party realignment, where all of the conservative Democrats flee the party, and they go to the Republican Party, and then the centrists and the right-wingers are forced to duke it out. Why should we have to battle with people who are not going to fight for what we believe in. We want Medicare for all. They're trying to stop Medicare for all. But Republicans and centrist Democrats, they both don't agree with Medicare for all. So they should be in the same party. They're the ones who should be sharing that ideological space, not us, right? So that's why my hopes is that if we don't get electoral reform in the near future, one, we keep pushing for ranked choice voting because that's an easy reform to enact at the state level, especially, you know, via ballot initiative. But two, I hope that in the event Bernie becomes the nominee, this catalyzes party realignment, where centrist Democrats are so, you know, against the idea of a social Democrat running the party that they leave the party. They join the Republican Party. Now, if this were to happen, this is something that rarely happens, the media would freak out because they would see this as, oh, well, Bernie is destroying the party. But every once in a while, that has to happen, Right. You have to have party realignment so that way, you know, you have overlap with the voters of the party that they're supposed to represent and the actual, you know, elected members of that party. It's incredibly important. So that's what I hope. But, you know, long story short, AOC is absolutely explaining very eloquently what I've said for years now. There, now, there's a little bit more that I want to share. Ocasio-Cortez also offered criticism in Monday's story for congressional Democrats, accusing her party's lawmakers of too often working to appease the interests of their most conservative members. She has frequently broken with House Democratic leadership since assuming office in January 2019. For so long, when I first got in, people were like, oh, you are going to basically be a Tea Party of the left? And what people don't realize is that there is a Tea Party of the left, but it's on the right edges, the most conservative parts of the Democratic Party, Ocasio-Cortez said. So the Democratic Party has a role to play in this problem, and it's like we're not allowed to talk about it. We're not allowed to talk about anything wrong the Democratic Party does, she continued. I think I have created more room for dissent, and we're learning to stretch our wings a little bit on the left. Ocasio-Cortez said the Congressional Progressive Caucus, of which she is a member, should expel lawmakers without adequate liberal bona fides charging that they let anybody who the cat dragged in call themselves progressives. There's no standard. That is exactly it. So the takeaway is that we don't have to just settle. We can keep pushing for change. Now, ideally, I would love to see, you know, a system where we have proportional representation. We increase the district magnitude from one to three, which just means that instead of us voting for one member of Congress, you know, maybe we vote for one member of Congress, but the candidates with the top three scores or top top three percentage totals all go to Congress, right? Um, we need change. But in the short term, ranked choice voting is something that actually can work. It has made a Green Party Senate candidate viable in the state of Maine. Um, but on top of that, in the event Bernie Sanders becomes the nominee, that is our path towards party realignment, possibly. Again, there's no way to really facilitate this, right? But you, we can just... Hope it happens if he's the nominee. I don't think it would happen right away. But if he becomes president, you're going to see individuals possibly like Joe Manchin want to flee the party because they feel as if that's what's going to help them become more electorally viable in the future. So um, at the end of the day, AOC is absolutely right. We should not be forced to share a party with centrists. Why doesn't the far right have to share the same party with in individuals like Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi? We're forced to share when they should be forced to share. So the message is that we're taking over this party and anyone who isn't progressive, who isn't a leftist or a socialist, social democrat or democratic socialist, I don't care. But if you're not on the left and you're in the center, you leave because we're taking over this party because we need a party that actually represents the left in this country, not just two right wing parties, one center right, one far right.